Hi, this is Chris Skelet with Pinnacle Training Consulting Systems. And today we're going to talk about the spine, get some base information about background, about connective tissue, a little bit about how the spine works, and some of the foundation information, which is going to help with the foundation course that you're reviewing right now. So what I want to do is begin with what is connective tissue. Connective tissue is basically things around the body or the spine, like muscles, ligaments, tendons that go from the head all the way through the middle back and all the way through the spine or lower tailbone. You also have fascia. Um, fascia is connective tissue that is made up of water. It's made of different chemicals and properties. And that is all in the lower back and also in the legs. It's in the shoulders and it's in the chest. So it's really pretty much everywhere. The role of connective tissue is basically to help provide transmit forces. It provides support and it also assists with movement. So when connective tissue becomes dysfunctional, other things become dysfunctional, which means movement patterns become dysfunctional. Uh, it can affect posture, pain, things of that nature. So if we look at the back side of the spine, which is looking at the posterior view, this is the skull or the cranium. You've got your cervical vertebra from up down here. You have your thoracic, which is your middle back, and then your lumbar, which is down in the lower tailbone region. Each part of the spine has a little knobby called the sphagnus process. And then on each side is the transverse process as well. And each part is connected also or has nerves that split on left and right. If I go to the front or side view, you can see that the spine is in a, it's called a convex curve, concave curve to convex. So that is a natural curve of the spine. And that's how the spine should look. As we get older, things may change, like going head forward. We maybe have some clients that are more erect. So that affects how the body works and moves. When we go a little bit deeper inside the joint or bone, there are things called facets. The facets are between each bone uh, and the neck. They're at a 45 degree angle. In the thoracic, they're in about a 60 degree angle, and the lower lumbar, they're 90 degree angle. Their job is to facilitate movement, so that deals with rotation and side bending. So when I say rotation, meaning turning the spine and side bending, or from the back, when you side bend your neck to the right, these facets go up on the left and down on the right. Conversely, if I rotate to the right, they go down here on the right, and they go up on the left. So that's a little bit of, of a, of a, a NAM review or a spinal movement. I want to talk about two things called osteokinematics and arthrokinematics. So osteokinematics is the movement that occurs between the joints. Arthrokinematics is movement that occurs between articular surfaces. So when someone raises their shoulder, that's going to be something like how the supraspinatus, which is the shoulder muscle, how it moves in the supraspinatus fossa. Uh, lastly, when we look at the lower tailbone, again, it's attached to the sacrum and then the coccyx, and then between that we have what's called the ilium, both hip bones, and then we have ones in the front. That makes what's called the SI, or sacroiliac joint. So when we look at from top to down, there's seven bones in the neck, thoracic means 12 bones in the thoracic region, and five in the lumbar. As you go from top down, you can notice that things get larger. The discs, which are between the joint, get smaller to larger. So more injuries occur typically in the lower part of the back. In the neck, most injuries occur typically about C5, C6, and the lumbar is between L4 and 5. Um, we look also with movement. You see more people have um, motion injuries at the L4 and 5 because, again, of bending, because of excessive flexion that puts stress on the ligaments, that puts stress on the discs, and that puts stress on the fascia. In this next section, we'll talk a little more about how the body works from the inside out.